So probably a good opportunity to go through some of the settings on uh, FSX 2020. A few of you guys are probably interested in some of the options that are available and I'm sure you've seen, uh, seen videos, other videos online. And this might be very much the same, so uh, if you're interested, stick with it and we'll have a look. So obviously we got to play the compete and the improve buttons, um, different uh, options in the software. We'll go to play first. Um, we have some saved games, random play, basically um, it's going to randomize your course, randomize your game settings. Last played, uh, I just finished playing a course in Abu Dhabi at Spanish Bay, so these are the last courses that I played. And then there's foot golf, which is uh, basically soccer that is uh, set up and meant for the GC Hawk. Um, I don't think it's even available on GC Quad. I um, never really looked into it, but uh, pretty sure it's only for a GC Hawk. And then, of course, new game. Um, all of our courses that we have in here. When you do uh, purchase a new course, I've got a few in here that I've uh, recently purchased but I haven't activated yet. Basically, you get an email activation code instantly from uh, Foresight Sports. You take the activation code, uh, copy and paste it right out of your email into the bottom, hit enter, and it'll activate the courses that you just purchased. Um, that's the idea there. As far as um, rounds, uh, all the courses, of course, that I have here, you can uh, build yourself a custom course. So if you click custom, you can go in here and choose uh, specific holes out of all the courses that you do own and set up your own custom course to have fun with um, challenge some of the friends that stop by. Um, I haven't used that option, but I've been uh, considering it recently. Um, also, if you choose to, you can click on the front nine and it's just got the back nine highlighted, so it's only going to play the back nine and vice versa. You can do the same thing, back nine, front nine. Um, or pick individual holes, so if I unhighlight particular holes, uh, it's going to start now on hole four, play five, six, seven, um, skip eight and play nine. So you can do that on any of the, the back holes. So if you choose to, if you wanted to play only the um, par fives, you would get rid of everything else and uh, just play the par fives. I think you get the hint there. So if we hit next, it'll just play the par fives. Um, pretty much the conditions, uh, you can set any time of day that you choose and it's obviously going to change the the light or the conditions out on the course to um, dusk or bright one o'clock. I usually set it for right in the mid-afternoon so the sun's at the highest, it's the brightest for the rounds of the play. Um, set the temperature, it is in Fahrenheit, so you can set the temperature for cooler or hotter and go to whatever um, temperature you prefer. Of course that does change the ball characteristics when you are playing. So I typically play around um, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which quite warm. And it's uh, for my temperatures, for my current uh, real playing environment. And then my carry distances, my ball flight, everything is uh, pretty consistent with what it is in real life. So I typically play at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm at 2240-ish uh, elevation. Again, you can set it to whatever your elevation is so that your ball carry distances are accurate. So again, I'm around that 2200 mark. So I leave the default setting there for myself, so all my carry distances are quite accurate. Uh, we also have the GCQ barometer. We can click that, and it's basically going to self-set the elevation. It'll set the temperature, etc. So uh, you can leave that clicked on, and then it changes as your actual real environment changes uh, for your, your day you're playing uh, sim golf. Or you have the real weather option. If we turn on real weather, you'll see basically the sea level and the temperature and everything change. Um, I'm not sure what course I actually had it on. Um, let's go to Coeur d'Alene, for example. I believe that one's in Idaho. If we hit real-time weather, when we go and play the game, the real-time weather for the Idaho today, right now, at this given time, real weather, we'll be playing wind, wind direction, um, temperature, elevation, etc. So that's that option. Time of day, um, we already talked about rain. I have it set on dry. Obviously you can have light rain or pouring rain. Um, that's pretty neat. You can change these settings in gameplay. So while you're playing, you can go on into the settings for the weather and add some clouds, add some fog, add, add some rain. So you can kind of start with a clear day if you choose to and change it to a cloudy or to a rainy day. Again, you have fog. Um, 
that's quite interesting and it's quite realistic changing the fog and clouds, rain, etc. I might click into one of the games and play around with that, give you guys a bit of an idea what that looks like. Uh, ground conditions, we have soft, medium, firm. Uh, this is fairway. Um, uh, typically I play right in the middle around medium. Uh, get into firm, you get some big bounces and a really good roll. Um, massive drives, etc. But you also uh, can run out of fairway in a heck of a hurry, just like real golf. Uh, wind, if we're not, if we don't have the real-time weather on, we can set the wind in the wind direction right next door to it. So we can have the wind for whatever kilometers I'm in kilometers, or you can set miles per hour, either or. And uh, again, you can adjust it in the game. So as we tweak it, it doesn't. Uh, um, you can see the 10 mile an hour, we can go all the way up to, what is it, 30 miles an hour. So again, we can adjust that in the gameplay as well as the wind direction. Fringe bounce, I typically have it set. I'm not sure, it's a little closer to the soft, but if you do land with a, an approach shot on the fringe, you do get a decent bounce. So I try to keep it right in this area. Feels pretty realistic for my current uh, environment that I play in real golf life. Um, green bounce, I like it a little on the softer side. Again, I'm trying to replicate some of the, the greens and the fairways that I play uh, for my environment. So, And then the green speeds, uh, if you adjust this here, it's not giving you a stick number, but if you adjust it inside the gameplay, you can actually see and set it to a 9, uh, 10, 12, 13 stimp, um, go all the way as low as, I think, 7, and maybe as high as 14. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I haven't played around with that one too much. Next tab over, we have rules. So mulligans, we have none or unlimited or custom. You can set two, three, four. I usually leave unlimited on and I don't actually use them. But every now and then, if you're trying to get set up for a putt and you end up tapping your ball, just trying to move it around on your hitting mat, uh, you can uh, detect a stroke. And that's where you use your mulligan and uh, go back and uh, replay that actual shot because that was just a mistake. Uh, the last round I was playing was three foot gimmies. You have the option for none, three foot, six foot, and it looks like custom. So we can go in here and change that to 10 foot, 11 foot, 12 foot, whatever we choose. Putting mode, you have the auto putts. Everybody's quite familiar with that. Uh, we, basically, you don't putt. The simulator software um, chooses what you're putt number should be and that's how you get the 1.2s or or 2.1 putts uh, to finish out. Um, fast putt and manual putt. Uh, we have practice. Practice is enabled. Basically while you're in normal course play you can hit the practice button in the option in the settings while you're in normal course play and you can actually have a full swing at an approach shot in practice mode. It's not going to count your strokes and then you go back to gameplay, turn off the practice mode, and then you can go and continue on with your course and uh, have some practice shots. Live penalties, typically I leave them disabled. Um, enabled, it's good. Obviously, it's much harder in simulator golf, but one uh, option I would like to see in uh, Foresight Sports uh, add to this is giving you an idea, maybe in the bottom corner, of what your live penalty and what it's looking like, meaning is it a reduction of 15% or 86% power, whatever. It's in a few different software, uh, simulator uh, software that's out there. So I'd like to see something like that or a reduced spin or both. Uh, preferred both, reduced spin plus a reduced power, give you a bit of an option of what it looks like for your live penalty because it is a bit of a crapshoot. When I do play with live penalties on, I typically kind of, when I'm in the rough that's not deep where I can still see the golf ball I take about 10% off and aim for kind of a, a 90 every now and then an 85% power. Um, pin placement easy normal hard uh, pretty self-explanatory stroke limit unlimited or it can be double par so that you're not getting uh, getting into the eights and the ten strokes I just leave it on unlimited and then we have our normal play, uh, typically I play stroke play, but we have match play, scramble, stableford, and modified stableford. Um, I haven't dabbled too much into them. I played some match play, it's quite good. Uh, once both players um, do, do hit a shot, you get to, uh, sorry this isn't scramble, you get to choose. It'll give you a picture in picture on the screen and you can choose which uh, lie or what position is better for your playing partner in scramble mode. Um, 
And then in players, we can choose our different tee boxes as well as your hand for uh, whether you're right-handed, left-handed, and you can insert a handicap. And then of course, I'm logged into FSX Live with my user and profile, so when uh, all my stats are being tracked on the uh, FSX Live uh, website, and all my rounds, my scoring rounds, my competitions, and just general practice on the fairways, um, carry distances. And I might do another video and show you what the, uh, if I call it a portal, um, the live portal on the web that track all your stats through FSX Live. But uh, that's what we have here. So if we wanted to add a player, we can name them or leave them as player one. And if you have a player with a live account, free account, I can create all my buddies' accounts and uh, I can log them in by clicking the link, log them in with their user and their password, sign them in, and same thing. Once my uh, colleagues, friends that are over are signed in on FSX Live, all their stats are being tracked inside of uh, uh, FSX Live. And you can see that anywhere on, on the internet. So you can have a look from, from your own home after you've been here playing for the afternoon. So that's basically the uh, look of the settings. Uh, I'm going to get back out of this and uh, give you a look at what the compete is all about. So we have games, which is a uh, glass break. Um, I'll sh probably do another video and show everybody what that looks like, but uh, the, the gist of that is you have a uh, time. I think it's about one minute, maybe it's 30 seconds, and it's a glass greenhouse in a garden, and you hit golf balls and smash out the glass. As you smash glass panes, you get points, and uh, it's the most points that you can drum up in the time limit that you're allotted. And inside six feet, great competition. Uh, it's a great uh, practice facility as well. Um, it's kind of, you start out level one and everything past level one is locked. You get uh, three approach shots. There's preset for you. You pick your wedge and you try to get inside a target of six feet. I'll do a, a separate video on inside six feet. I really enjoy that one. I haven't made it very far, maybe, maybe round or level 20, something like that but it basically takes uh, greens from all the courses that you own and continues to create um, different uh, competitions for yourself to improve your short game. Uh, competitions, we have tournaments, skills challenge. Uh, that's a, a really nice option that we have. I'll do a separate video on that. I don't want to get too much into it because me explaining it uh, is not going to help versus uh, doing a separate video. Obviously the long drive and the closest to the pin competition is pretty self-explanatory. And then the newly released leagues, um, Foresight Sports just released the open division of leagues just a few weeks ago. Uh, currently they have eight events and they're in season one. There's about 226 players in the league right now. And um, there's, you can go into each league. They're only on for a certain period of time. Like I'll go right to the beginning. These ones were the very first comps that they did set up, and you can see 132 players played the Blue Bayou Par Threes, and it's open for about a week. I did a separate video on that. It's posted on my channel, so feel free to have a look at that. And then obviously the ones that are currently active today. There's 71 players playing the Par Threes at Broken Tee, uh, the back nine of uh, Blue Bayou, and then the ones that are upcoming that'll uh, open up uh, October 5th. Uh, these next two uh, rounds start up so that's a lot of fun that's really new uh, with uh, Foresight Sports it's like I said about three three weeks old roughly somewhere in there <clears throat> then we have the range the Foresight range there this is the the range that you would typically use to track all your data get your your club stats see your um, your impacts, your strike location on your clubs, etc. That's what I guess I would call the fitting range that has all the analytics for your, your irons, your drivers, etc. That's uh, the range that I typically practice and work on my game with. Inside some of the courses, they do have separate driving ranges. Um, out of all the courses I have, there's probably a half a dozen other driving ranges that are quite unique. Um, they just don't give you all the options and all the different analytics that you get in the normal foresight fitting range. Know your numbers. It's basically uh, gapping software to you gap your irons, uh, your fairway woods, etc. So you go in here and you set up uh, what clubs you'd like to gap and um, goes through and 
it basically allows you to hit about five shots. It'll give you the option to choose the best three out of the five, and then you move on, uh, progressing from um, lob wedge all the way up to driver if you choose, or perhaps you're only doing your wedges or just your irons from um, maybe nine iron to three or four iron, and you can gap them all, and it gives you a nice little PDF printout and the gapping numbers between there. Um, that's really about it that's, that's in here. The rest are self-explanatory. I already talked about, talked our way through there. That, uh, that information. Some of the other settings, just around gameplay settings that are quite nice. We've got the graphics option on the side. I play with full graphics, so I have a, a, a NVIDIA 2080 GTX uh, graphics card. So I play with full graphics, but if your computer is not quite as powerful, um, you can use balanced, which is kind of the best of the graphics and equal performance. Or if your graphics card isn't really strong at all, you can just go for full performance. The graphics uh, quite diminish. Uh, so I just play on uh, full graphics. The nice part about having the, the uh, GeForce uh, graphics card. I do have uh, a 16 by 10 or 19, 20 by 1200 uh, projector. So I do have that setting set up. Typically, I'll leave uh, dual, dual displays. I have a 86 inch um, Samsung QLED TV. Uh, basically, when I'm standing at a dress of the golf ball that I'm looking right at the uh, flat screen TV, um, all my club analytics go on that. So typically, I leave the uh, dual display enabled. And once you have that, you can go into dual display and pick your two displays and your resolution for both uh, displays. Uh, settings off to the side here. I'm just going to go back and turn that off so I can see my camera. The settings off to the uh, We have the window screen, full screen. Window is basically so you can see your um, your icons on your desktop or minimize the software in case you have to open anything else up. Um, on screen data. Um, we have our flight analytics, our club analytics, um, a table of all our shots. If I leave this turned on, showing my shot data when I'm on the range, these separate screens will pop up or a separate video of my uh, three second swing will show up. Uh, last shot results for when you're playing on the golf course, uh, I usually turn that on when I'm playing uh, full course rounds and it'll show me uh, my last shot distance and the next shot um, to the flag distance what's remaining. Try to cruise through some of these and not get too into them. Tracers, we have tracers always on, so if you're on the range, you can have the tracers, all your tracers, which kind of clutters up the screen if you hit a lot of shots. Or I typically leave last only, so it's just going to show me my previous shot, and then when I hit the next shot, it's again going to show you just your last shots, or turn them straight off. Um, what else we got? Mini map or video preview, so when you're playing on the course, you can have a, a the mini map that uh, you can see the fairway and the bunkers, etc. Or if you have your camera set up, you can have a video preview instead, and it'll show you about a three-second clip of your previous shot. Zoom to overhead when I'm playing courses, playing rounds. Typically, I leave zoom to overhead on. And uh, after you hit your shot down the fairway, you'll get the bird's eye view over uh, from straight up above. And that's a pretty handy feature to see if your shot, uh, if it was a leak light right, left, if you hit your draw, your fade, uh, etc. Aim line, it's basically a dotted line and an aiming pole, a uh, black and white post that gives you a, a down the range look on the course so on the fairway, shows you where you're actually aiming. On the keyboard you can go right to left, um, move your aim point around or um, just aim inside the simulator bay and hit it out to the right or hit it out to the left uh, with GC Quad, we have those options. So. Um, right uh, shots to CSV, so these are going to be writing to basically an Excel file. Um, on screen aiming, this stuff mostly is for um, touch screens, which I don't run a touch screen, I use a wireless keyboard. And then we have language and units, uh, volume, um, I have English set up on here. Commentary, uh, you can turn this on, I have it on as none right now. Um, basically, there's a I think it's only a male's voice, 
that'll kind of tell you that you hit a, a slice or a draw and give you some kind of funny comments when you do uh, hit some bad shots. And then we have the units, so you can set up, uh, depending on where you are in the world, uh, ball speed, miles per hour, and you can change them, vice versa, whatever you want, set them up all individually. Um, for most of you guys watching, probably ball speed is miles per hour, club speed, miles per hour. Um, I'm Canadian, so typically I like the wind speed in uh, kilometers per hour. Carry distance in yards, total distance yards or meters, either or your choice. Um, carry distance can be in feet. I'm not sure who would run that, but it's possible. And offline, I leave in yards. Um, some people I have been, some people out there might be running uh, feet as well. Peak height. This is one that I typically prefer in feet. So I'll run the peak height of your shot, and the elevation I'll run in feet as well. Um, elevation of your course, and then the closure rate. Uh, degrees per second I have for uh, your club analytics when you're on the fitting range, driving range. Um, I have it set up in degrees per second for the club base. And then last but not least we have uh, the swing camera. If you guys have some cameras, and I got a whole bunch of cameras set up in here so I got a bunch of stuff, but if you have some cameras, I have some giggy cameras from Fleur. Uh, the Blackfly Giggy cameras, I have those set up for my high speed uh, shots. You can choose um, to have a camera and uh, it'll be captured all on FSX Live on the online portal. As well as, like I was mentioning, you can re eliminate the mini map and um, have your three second uh, shot preview. And um, devices, this is basically the device, this is your how you connect your GC Quad, GC Hawk, GC2 to FSX um, automatically. Typically it automatically sets up, if it doesn't you can come in here and just hit connect. And then they do have the option for, for uh, dual launch monitors. Um, I don't have dual launch monitors so I'm not really familiar with how that option works, but um, that's the general gist of it. That should give you an idea of what the options are in uh, FSX 2020. And uh, I'll do a couple more videos with some range information, some of the club analytics, and some of our skills challenges or in six, inside six feet challenges at a later date.